Good morning. Good mid good midday, everybody. <laughs> I was inspired by prayer today. I feel that prayer is something that we can live and breathe. Prayer is more about communion, sharing, a full, complete joiner. So as prayer is always for yourself, so is forgiveness always given you. It is impossible to forgive another, for it is only your sins you see in him. You want to see them there and not in you. That is why forgiveness of another is an illusion. Yet it is the only happy dream in all the world, the only one that does not lead to death. Only in someone else can you forgive yourself. For you have called him guilty of your sins, and in him must your innocence now be found. So he's saying this here, and he said in other places that we need to uh, bring the problem and the answer together. So we need to take this image of the other into our own mind and work with that. And this is the powerful path of healing. It's very common, this um, thing of praying for others. is something we have done in, the, in churches, everywhere in the world. We may pray for the sick. We may pray for the whole universe to become better. Um, and he's, he addresses that here. He says, praying for others, if rightly understood, becomes a means for lifting your projections of guilt from your brother and enabling you to recognize it is not he who is hurting you. Or we could even say it is not he who is hurting, period. It's a perceptual problem. So, so praying for others becomes a way of lifting our projections. So it should be that way. Otherwise, it's this horrific idea that I read about first, where it talks about forgiveness to destroy, which is, I am better, and therefore I can forgive all those miserable things and people. So that idea is called forgiveness to destroy. We already destroy by having that belief that we ever could be better or better off. Um, in fact, we are what we or we, we, are, we aren't what we perceive, but we have beliefs in us that we need to look at. And our beliefs are reflected in what we perceive. I just really love this, these strong ex explanations of this stuff. Because, yeah, it helps us to think clearly. So, Ellen, let me unmute you. We can... Um, start to have a sharing here. Okay. We're both unmuting. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Hi, Jenny. I can't hear. Let me see. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, hi, there's just something you said there and it's, it's coming up a lot for me over the last few days. <clears throat> um, I'm Bear with me now because I'm trying to put it into words so I ask the right question. Um, when you realize that you've projected, when, <clears throat> when somebody has done something to upset you and you realize that you've projected and you realize that you have found fault with them or attacked them in your mind, it's a long time since I read um, the course. So going back to the situation, how can I, now that I've realized what I've done, I need to go back to the time when it happened. Is that right? And choose again? Well, if it is a memory in your mind, it's not really about the time. It's about the belief right now. The belief, yeah. <clears throat> that's where you go back into right okay and it can be an image of the other or an image of the situation and that's where you need to go 
Yeah, okay. Um, and that's where, that's the bit that I get confused with. I go there and do I just let go then of the projection? Because it's quite a hard thing to do, especially if it's, if it's cut to me deeply. Mm. You well, know, I can, mm. I can tell myself in my mind that they are not guilty. Um, and I can be very, very willing to believe it, but at times I don't actually experience it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where you need help, right? Yeah. Like yeah. The Holy Spirit. And Spirit. Yeah. When, whenever we ask how, like how do I do it, we need to remember that the Holy Spirit is the how. The Holy Spirit is the key here. Because the Holy Spirit is the sane part of our mind. The Holy Spirit is in us, in us all. And but yeah, with those very difficult things that we find very difficult to forgive or heal or difficult things to deal with, um, we may need to spend a lot of time praying about it or being with it and being with the images and for me it's been to not avoid the images because beliefs or things that happened they come with images images of people or events yeah. so to see those images <laughs> and if it is about people there are those really, really helpful lessons in the course where, for example, one of them is where you see this image of this um, harsh and difficult situation and this person. And then he encourages us to find the, if you can find some light in this person and remember a good time or a moment. And, and maybe that's hard to find, but if there is, and to bring them together. So there are those exercises that are just very helpful. And another one that he was asking also in this section that I read today is where he says, would, would you blame yourself for this? Or would you forgive mm -hmm. yourself for this? If you put yourself in that situation and usually we, we want to say yes, we would want to forgive ourselves. Although sometimes we can be also very harsh. Yes. And yeah. say, well, I would never do that. Or, yeah. But then the other thing is to remember it's a dream and it is our own dream. And our, our person, our character and all the other characters in the situation are equal players in this dream that the mind dreamt up. And that usually helps me. That has helped me a lot to see it, to see the dream and to take responsibility for, for my dream. Like my own dream of um, the hardships I went through in childhood and I feel the only way I could heal it was to realize it was my dream. Otherwise I would forever be a victim to something. And it can, I feel it can go fast. But once you work on it that way, it doesn't have to take years. Yeah, I mean, I can do it a lot um, with a lot of things, but it's the ones that cut deep. It's like, it's, I watch it and my mind is very interesting because the majority of me wants to let it go, but there's a tiny, 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 tiny little corner of me that's actually enjoying, it's the ego side of it. It's enjoying being righteous, you know, <laughs> yeah. or in the right. And I'm, I'm watching it all happen. Yeah. But I'm, I, I still, with, with one particular situation, I'm finding it very difficult to, mm -hmm. to drop it all, you know, to drop it all, to let, to let all the past 
and everything that's um, entangled in that go. Yeah. With with this person, so yeah, it's um, it's a struggle. I'm I'm watching myself with interest and watching my mind with interest, mm -hmm. and but in this particular situation, as I said, there's the tiny kernel mm -hmm. that wants to hang on to it, and I'm right. seeing it, and you know, but it's yeah, so it's it's difficult and it's causing me suffering, and I can see it's causing me suffering. It's quite extraordinary, and I still 100% can't um, separate the past from the present and what I'm meeting now, you know? Mm -hmm. So, not fully, not fully. Right. I'm getting there, but not fully. It's a huge struggle. It's very good that you see, <coughs> that you see the little kernel of mm. that wants to be angry. Yeah. And wants to be right. Yeah. And I do find it helpful to be very, um, to be very gentle and allowing and loving with yourself and the situation and the thoughts. Um, because the, in the dream that, you know, the belief in victimhood and somebody actually did something to you, that, that is a strong, I think we all go through this victim belief and it can be a strong belief. So, and since everything and everybody in our dream are thoughts in our mind, we can work mm. with them and address mm. them and talk to them. And sometimes we may need to approach and talk and share, you know, the, about... And be reminded. Yeah. And be reminded because, you know, you tend to forget what you, what you used to know and you go back into an old way of being. Yeah, so it's remembering. Yeah. yeah, but the victim identity, that's one of the big ones to look at. <laughs> that is uh, mm -hmm. that's very good to, to look at. And, and it's very subtle. Yeah. It could be, it can be, it can be very, very deep down and very quiet, but still playing, you know? I, yeah, I, it is. I, I see that happening, yeah. It is very yeah. deep. Mm. And we are all, as personality, we are this hero of the dream. So, um, and even a suffering or a victim hero of the dream, you know, can be preferred in this. I mean, it's insane. But, and then, I mean, I find the course so helpful and it has answers to everything, like, even, um, yeah, he's saying in this, seek not outside yourself, saying, seek not outside yourself, for all your pain <clears throat> comes simply from a futile search for what you want, insisting where it must be found. What if it is not there? Do you prefer that you be right or happy? Mm. Be you glad that you're told where happiness abides and seek no longer elsewhere. You will fail. But it is given you to know the truth and not to seek for it outside yourself. And to seek outside yourself doesn't mean the body self, the personal yeah. self is the capital self. Mm. Yeah. Which is one, you know, so, mm. yeah. Thanks, Jenny. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, he actually says that, and I love that, in the course I've been thinking about that, um, truth, truth will be returned to you by your desire, as it was lost to you by your desire for something else. Mm. So when we get tired of this something else and it's mm -hmm. deep i mean it can feel like we're actually not choosing it it can seem like it's happening to us which is the victim idea but, yeah. and he's saying teach only love for that is what you are so that's the same part of the mind that we can just start to choose more and more mm -hmm. practice with in all those painful situations we just practice to choose Teach only love for that is what you are. And that takes a lot. I mean, that takes a lot of awareness and attention. 
and this mind watching and healing of our own mind it, it does take a lot of time it's a full time job mm. <laughs> i guess we've got a lot of time at the moment to invest in this new job yeah yeah exactly i like it thank you that was really good yeah yeah thanks for bringing it up hi jenny hi everybody yeah, I'm so grateful to have this time. <sighs> yeah, I feel like I am really touching into um, what I've been doing all along, you know, something around that poem that I wrote and the image that stayed with me has been like almost, felt like the inspiration was like Jesus's kiss you know, and um, the kiss of love. And then I saw an image of like a wound on somebody's hand on, on Instagram, and it had been stitched. There was a, like a, about the size of lips actually, but on her hand, and it was stitched, you know, with stitches, like, and it was a close up. But I felt like it was the lips of Christ, you know, that has been stitched up and closed, you know, and almost like Jesus saying, you know, that I have closed without blame, right, but that I have closed its expression, you know, the mouth was for kissing and for speaking and eating, what we take in, interesting, isn't it, how the lips mm -hmm. and the mouth and this kiss of love, you know. Yeah, so I'm really sitting with that, Jenny, and just seeing, mm -hmm. made of my own language, really, haven't I? Mm -hmm. You know, with these lips, um, which is set, which is nothing to do with God's, right? <laughs> and this coronavirus, it's people with masks, funnily, on their mouths as well. And something around the breathing, which I'm feeling quite a bit in my breath, you know, and this disease seems to be about people who can't breathe and then they die. I feel on a symbolic level, I'd love to hear what you feel about that, you know, like the breath and God's breath, God's lips. Thank you, yeah. Well, I think we can take this on different levels. But yeah, the world and the universe is like a symbol of the death of the Son of God and uh, shutting him up, putting him on the cross and the crucifixion. And the, so the stitches, yeah, they can symbolize that shut up God, shut up truth. We, we want to do this thing on our own. And, you know, so, so the awakening process would be to slowly undo this stitches or fast if, if you can but that's what it would be about to see the christ and to hear the christ and to allow the christ to speak through you and to allow the kiss of love the expression of pure love which has nothing to do with the physical kiss although the the body um also it needs to be used while we still believe in the body so yeah yeah, yeah. i love that the whole because of because sometimes i think i don't hear so well and think it's my sinuses but yeah i really feel that it's what am i not hearing you know right. what am i not what do i want hearing? What do I not want to listen to? <laughs> what do I not want to listen to? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't want to hear that, that I'm love. I don't want to hear that there is only love. Yeah, I mean, it's this question. What do I want to see what I denied? Because it is the truth. Like, that's another brilliant question in the course. Would I want to see what I denied? I denied it because it is the truth. And I wanted my own world and I put it on top of the truth. But the question is, am I open to see what I denied? Am I open to see the truth? Would I want to 
So, and I like the symbolism of, you know, of those things and the symbolism of the virus now and the world shut down and everybody isolated and, but I want to see, I see it as a symbol of going within. It's a good time. It's. That's what I want to hear, Jenny. That's yeah. what I need the clarity on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good time, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and don't watch the news. No, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, you can and watch watch your mind and use forgiveness, but it just I just hear that message. Don't watch the news. So I just say it. Um, but there's a little voice saying, yeah, but maybe you should be taking something a bit more seriously, you know, as in there's, there's shit going up, going down, you know, and perhaps you need to be doing something for others and maybe some guilt that I'm not phoning enough people to see how are you. But that's not my job, right? No, no, it has to come from very deep, inspired place to do that like extending otherwise it comes from guilt and it should and that's heavy although the spirit can use that too and bring you a miracle but there is no should ever it's all about the healing of your own mind and you know as much as we can see that these things as symbols <coughs> like the not hearing or the clogged up we can you know what do i not want to see and hear but it's also helpful to not look to form don't interpret the form that's what i feel i'm hearing actually yeah, yeah. it's good to hear from you don't interpret the form another brilliant idea in the course is perception but deceives perception can only deceive so we need to have and that's this thing of you know seeing the christ in your brother you don't see the Christ in the form of your brother because that form is a projection. So perception is projection. So the training is to look beyond the form and then we will start to see the form as neutral. <laughs> it means nothing, especially when we have the inner voice leading us. We learn to navigate here in the world without being affected by form We're kind of gliding on the miracle of just resting in god yeah yeah and i feel this time is a, a, that is the shift in me and what's happening is to as you said on monday to now um that the, the practice is over you know or the rehearsal is over and this is now to to live it to live this love yeah and that i feel in my heart so that i am opening up yeah. to and, and to see that this is not real yeah. the only thing that is real is is what's in my heart and mm. and how i move from that right yeah. thank you jenny yeah thank you michelle overlook error <laughs> But it, and it is a practice. I'm thinking of Julia and your sharing yesterday about your being just there with your child all hours of day and night. And it's a challenge of really knowing how to be in that situation. And it's good. Like we all have those. We have situations, right? That, and these are our paths situations are our path our forgiveness path so we it's good it's a it's a path of transcending the, the mistake of the ego and the perceptual world who is most urgent solway or julia <laughs> We, we sit the uh, comment about what I said, maybe, Julia, you want to share first? Oh. 
Okay. Yeah, um, I just wanted to share that I'm happy to be reminded that this is our past um, because that can be sometimes the thoughts that maybe it would be different if I was somewhere else and mm -hmm. I am well in, in the depth of me, I'm very aware that this is my past and this is where my teaching or healing is, is and it's just that sometimes um, I would like it to be different, <laughs> that to, you know, to face what is in, in front of me and um, uh, what is coming up in, in, in these days also, I see this a pattern of abandonment like in the storyline from my story and abandoning myself and abandoning my daughter and uh, mm. to be with these places inside myself you know of all these all these corners and all these things that I that I abandoned and I don't know how to meet with gentleness it's like this abandonment is so strongly in me that that I don't even know to how to approach it with, with not wanting to uh, abandon it, change it or fix it or be very harsh. So I'm just opening up to, to really want to, how can I say, not to run from it, but also to to meet it in a different way with this gentleness that I that I that it's not I don't find that I know how to to meet it with gentleness. It's like I always see this pattern of abandonment. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Yeah, that is so. Yeah, I can see. I can see it and I can see you that are so willing to sit with it and um, you're there with your daughter and, and those special relationships were made from guilt and from the deep, from bur trying to bury the deep abandonment issue and the separation issue, it's buried in the special relationship. So for you to, you're almost like forced to face it like you're there and you and you want to face it now and it's more like the whole world and the whole universe have you know given you the opportunity now jesus has given you the opportunity the spirit has given you this opportunity to face it now and uh, yeah that's... at the same time it's like i want to face it and the voice that i'm facing it with is this I have to find out how to face it. It's like I'm coming with this approach towards it that I don't know, but it's well it is you sit you sit in prayer, you sit with you look into all the corners of consciousness and it's not so easy to distract maybe and, and maybe the willingness to not distract will help you and the desire to have a to to have this very deep connection and love with your daughter rather than the distance and the abandonment and rejecting her and the anger that can come up and like there is such a desire to to overcome that yes and that's that's that is the path yeah that is what this is about mm -hmm. and again the holy spirit is the how there is no formula in and, and uh, your part again is your willingness you offer your willingness that's good to be reminded yeah. it's very obvious but easy to forget yeah <laughs> trying to go somewhere else so and then to be open and flexible and like be ready and open for the miracle because the miracle is something unexpected it's something we didn't plan for so we need to be open-minded enough for it to be able to come in 
surprise we can have the prayer surprise me Holy Spirit. yeah thank you julia thanks julia Solvay. Yes. Uh, it actually touched a lot of what I was about to say, I think. <laughs> um, I was a little um, tricked by you saying, Jenny, you saying that uh, we all sit and have a lot of time and, and uh, isolated and I think, I have really have the feeling uh, of stress <laughs> in the middle of all this. And I was um, trying to find out, you know, that's a really, it's, it's a well-known feeling for me, stress. And um, I was like, okay, what is it? What, what is it? Even all the groups, all the, Things or I can join, make me stress. It makes me stressful. It's really so stupid, and I was I was really trying to go into what is this, and it's yeah, it's 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 it feels like it's some kind of, it's some core belief that again something that I have to do yeah yeah the obligation the, the obligation obligation about it yeah so I'm, I'm really trying now I have many things I can do today and really just letting it go and say okay I don't know if I'm going to do it but for, even this meeting you know I didn't know until one o'clock if I was going to be in it or not yeah yeah that's great but my internet uh, just suddenly was like I was like okay maybe am I going in there again or not I was really like yeah so it's it's, it's so new for me to feel into it and yeah. I can see that I my habit is to when I when I have a lot of things to just go into it and like forget everything about feeling and yeah. Mm. So in a way it's a, it's a really, it's a gift mm -hmm. to have yeah. it like this. Yeah. I can also see my, really my, uh, I have the fear that I need to protect myself from this and then just shut off everything, you know, mm. like right. before right. in my life just, right. Yeah. That's the flip side of that, that, yeah. that is in the same belief. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same, you know, I can go into everything or I can, mm. yeah. Shut off. But it's, it's actually good, I can see that. Yeah. Mm. But it's good, it's, you have, I know you have been looking at that belief that someone or the external world can have a demand on you. Yeah force you or that you should and there is a lot of fear and tightness in that yes and it's like this situation with all the people my family my children they're not here <laughs> like with julius <laughs> they are they're grown up so they live for themselves but the the thing that that they are you know pushed and by this situation too uh, it really throws everything right in my face again mm -hmm. all the feelings all the responsibility everything yeah so this is yeah and you yeah. See, it doesn't matter if they're with you or not the thoughts are with you. And that's where you need to work. Yeah. Yeah. That of, of responsibility. Like accept your one responsibility. Yes. I've, I've heard like the, everybody in community and something saying about just stepping in function and, uh, you know, 
and I haven't been able to understand it. And uh, I actually, yeah, wanted to go to Miyoka just because. Of, <laughs> okay, teach me. Let me know what is this. But I have. I think I have a little understanding about it now. To, yeah. to just go into it and not. Uh, yeah. It, it take everything, all the feelings, everything that comes, yeah. and just keep like taking one little step into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And stepping into function is like stepping into extending, stepping into inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Beautiful. I have a one more little um section to read and um, we could end with this unless somebody has something more on their heart no. um, this is the end of song of prayer so he's here he's uh, requesting us the spirit is really calling us home so now return your holy voice to me the song of prayer is silent without you the universe is waiting your release because it is its own be kind to it and to yourself and then be kind to me i ask but this that you be comforted and live no more in terror and in pain. Do not abandon love. Remember this, whatever you may think about yourself, whatever you may think about the world, your father needs you and will call to you until you come to him in peace at last. Thank you. Same time and place tomorrow, if you'd like to join, practice guidance. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I don't have you all. There. Now everybody can speak if you would like. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, Dave. Thank you, Jenny. Mm, bye. Walk in peace. Mm. Mm -hmm.